This is Action News at 10 with your Action News team, Francesca Fabulosa and sitting in for but drinky white man, John Harriman. Thank you, Henry. I'm Francesca Fabulosa. My co-anchor, Beldronicus Whiteman, is on assignment. Again, that's Beldronicus Whiteman, not the drinky white man. How much longer before you get that right, Henry? I call him as I see him. This is Action News at 10, and I'm delighted to welcome our guest anchor for tonight, John Harriman. Welcome, John. Thank you, Francesca. I'm happy to be here. Tonight is a very special night here on Action News as we will be featuring an interview live from the North Pole with none other than Santa Claus himself later in the broadcast. I can't wait for that. Talk about your Christmas spirit. It sounds like fun, doesn't it? Our man in the field, Michael Bendix, will be bringing that to us a little later in the program. But right now, here are the headlines. Donald Trump was in court again today on one of the 3,700 charges against him and he had to be forcibly restrained when he attempted to drop his pants and defecate in the middle of the courtroom. The incident was motivated by a comment made by Judge Pamela Hayes that Trump took exception to and he sought to register his disapproval by shitting himself in public. As a result of this spectacle, Trump's approval among Republican voters rose another 9% proving yet again there is no line Trump can cross that will cost him votes. When pressed for a comment, Republican presidential hopeful Chris Christie said, how does that mentally defective Cheeto from hell keep getting away with this stuff? How indeed. On Capitol Hill today, Speaker of the House Mike Johnson proposed a bill that would make godlessness a crime punishable by death. If passed, this bill would make agnosticism, atheism, and any other form of anti-religion a class 1 felony to which a death sentence would be attached. When asked if this bill seemed draconian, Johnson said, Any law that promotes religious adherence and promotes his word and forces his worship is inherently just. That's how a free society and a Christian nation work together in tandem to the benefit of all. Hum, well, it's a good thing I believe in God or I might find myself swinging from the end of a government rope. Do you believe in God, Francesca? Well, John, it kind of sounds like I'm going to have to. In other news, a man attempted to shoot up a supermarket in Provo, Utah today. Fortunately, the gun he brought to commit the crime was only a toy replica of an AR-15 and no one was hurt by the candy bullets the gun fired. The man was quickly fallen upon and beaten senseless until police arrived to place him into custody. Upon questioning, the man, 37-year-old, Javier Pinto said, it looked real enough. I should have known something was up when it only cost me $40. If only more mass shooters were as stupid as this guy, we'd have fewer mass shootings from guys this stupid. Words to live by, John. Over 400 pregnant women showed up at the North Carolina State Capitol today to protest abortion rights legislation in an impressive display of synchronized protest. On the count of 10, the women went into labor and had their babies on the Capitol lawn, after which... The women all left leaving the babies behind to be cared for by the assembled legislature, said one lawmaker. We just want them to have the babies. We don't care what happens after that so long as they stay off any government assistance. Now, here's Rebecca Howard with today's Powerball results. Thanks, Francesca. The numbers were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for a $30 million jackpot, and the winner was 63-year-old William Hooten, who said he'd been playing those numbers since the Powerball was first created in 1992. 31 years for a $30 million payoff sounds like a plan to me. Bill says he's going to buy lots of hookers and beer with the money. Congratulations, Bill. Now let's go to Flash Madigan for the Sports Minute. Flash. Thanks, Francesca. This is Flash Madigan with the Sports Minute. Give me one minute and I'll give you the sports. In college football, the U of W Firecrackers slaughtered the U of C Thunderstorm 47-9 in an upset that left the Thunderstorm questioning their manhood. While in the Serial Bowl, the GT humiliated the U of a 52-6 public spanking that left their heinies red and sore and crying for their mommies. Other scores of note, we're 17 to 14, 23 to 12, 31 to 23, and 107 to 4. I'll bet that game was a snooze. The Alabama Cornholes refused to take the field in protest of the newly passed Sister Act, which prohibits sexual contact with one sister prior to the 15 years old age of consent. Deal with it, Alabama, and get your butts on the field. In baseball, Potokit Pilgrims outfielder Bongo San Diego was tagged out at first after he hit a home run, but was so fixated on seeing how far the ball went 
He failed to run the bases until it was much too late. This left him sad and crying for his mommy. Nothing interesting happened in basketball since Michael Jordan retired. Hell, has anything interesting happened since we lost Jordan? And does anyone really give a shit what happens in soccer? This has been Flash Madigan with the Sports Minute. Back to you, Francesca. Thanks, Flash. Now, here's Lauren Clyde with the weather. Lauren, what kind of Christmas can we all look forward to having tomorrow? Thanks, Francesca. Well, it's cold and dark and dreary out. It's the sort of weather that just makes you want to die. Will the sun ever come out again? I don't know. Sometimes, I doubt it. I doubt if we'll ever see the sun again and we'll all just wither away in a dark, dreary purgatory with no way out. No way out. As you can see from the map there's nothing to be hopeful about. It's just dark, dreary and depressing in a soul-crushing clutch of winter out from which our souls shall never be lifted again. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Back to you, Francesca. It sounds like Santa will have plenty of cold and snow for his big ride tonight. It sure does, and speaking of Santa, we promised you an interview with him at the start of the show. Well, it's time we turn it over to Michael Bendix at the North Pole for that exclusive interview with him, the jolly old elf himself, Father Christmas, pair know well, of course, I'm talking about Santa Claus. Take it away, Michael. Thanks, Francesca, and Merry Christmas to everyone back in the studio. This is Michael Bendix live from the North Pole. I'm here waiting for the big man to find a few minutes in his crazy schedule before he leaves on his around-the-world trip in just a few hours. How fortunate are we that he's willing to make time for an interview with us. We're just waiting for word to come down that he's ready. There's still a flurry of activity going on here. Toys are still being made and packed into the sleigh. The reindeer are getting ready and the excitement is at a fever pitch while we, oh, I'm getting word from my producer. Santa's ready. He'll be here momentarily. Hello, Michael. Have you been a good boy this year? Who are you? I'm Santa Claus, silly boy. I'm here to be interviewed as we agreed on. Hoo hoo hoo. Matt. Yes, Mike. Who is this guy? He said he was Santa Claus. And you believed him. Shouldn't I have? Since when is Santa Claus three feet tall and smells like a distillery? I'm making a list of checking it twice. Well, he's got the red suit. So does every drunk on the street corner shilling for the Salvation Army. You need to vet better than does he have the suit. So, you're saying he's a fraud? I'm saying he couldn't be more of a fraud if he had the word fraud tattooed on his forehead. Sorry, Mike. I'll take him out. Do you have any scotch? Santa's got a powerful thirst. Just come with me, Santa. Hoo hoo hoo. I apologize for that. Viewers, like I said, it's crazy around here at the moment. We'll have that interview with Santa very soon. While we're waiting, I see Frosty over there. Let's see if I can get him to come over for a few minutes. Frosty, Frosty, do you have a minute to speak with us? Ladies and gentlemen, Frosty the Snowman. Hi, Frosty. Hi, whoever you are. I'm Michael Bendix of the Action News team in New York. I guess that's cool. Get it? I'm a snowman saying something's cool. I get it, Frosty. I'm not Frosty. Frosty's a dweeb. I'm Slushy. Slushy the Snowman, I don't think I've ever heard of you. Well, we're even. I've never heard of you either. What did you want? Well, I was hoping to talk to you, but I thought you were Frosty the Snowman. Oh, I see. I'm not Frosty the Snowman, so I'm not worth talking to. Well, it's just that Frosty is an iconic Christmas figure and you're... Just a nobody. Just a talking snowman without a mythology, so I'm just a putz. That's not what I meant. Fine, whatever. I'll leave you to talk to your precious Frosty. I'm truly sorry for the misunderstanding. Bite my snowball's dick. It's Michael. Trust me, it's Dick. Sorry. Well, Santa should be here momentarily. I apologize for all the false starts, but we'll get things cleared up now. Mike, I've got a Christmas elf. Would you like to talk to her? Sure, that's fine. We still have a few minutes before Santa gets here. Michael, 
This is Bell Chime. She works in the toy shop. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Bell Chime. You can call me Bell. Thank you, Bell. I'm Michael. Yes, your producer told me. So, have all the toys been made? Are you all caught up for tonight? All the toys are done. We're right on schedule. That's wonderful. Does it become overwhelming to make toys for all the children of the world? Well, it's not all the children. A lot of them are on the naughty list, so they just get a lump of coal, which is Santa's way of saying try harder next year. Then you have to minus all the children who follow a pagan religion or no religion at all. So we actually make toys for only about 30-ish percent of the children globally. That many are naughty. There's no shortage of naughty children in the world. I guess not. How long have you been a Christmas elf? I started shortly after I turned 400, and I'm almost 760 now. You're that old. How long do elves live? My mother lived to 1237, and my grandmother lived to nearly 1500. Incredible. We're short, but we're sturdy. What does the typical day in the life of a Christmas elf look like? Sleep, wake up, breakfast, make toys, lunch, make toys, dinner, make toys, sleep, rinse and repeat. Sounds like a demanding schedule. You gotta love it. Well, thank you for talking to us, Miss Bell. I'd better get ready for Santa's interview. He should be here any time now. Santa, Santa's gone. I'm sorry. He left twenty minutes ago. He won't be back till dawn, and he'll sleep for a week. He's gone. I'm sorry. I can see you're disappointed. Matt, he's gone. I had no idea. It's not my fault. I don't believe this. There's no interview with Santa, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so sorry for this. We had intended to bring you an exclusive interview with Santa Claus, and we blew it. Michael, improvise something Christmassy. But you know, Christmas is bigger than even Santa Claus. It's the magic of the holiday, the spirit of the season, the togetherness and joy that it brings that's important, and that joy is available to everyone, no matter who they are. Christmas is that most magical time of year when we smile a little easier, laugh a little harder, and love with all our heart. There's a lively spring in our step as we go about our holiday duties, buying presents, making dinner for the family. And generally living life to its fullest while we await. Oh, now who threw that? God damn it! I'm trying to have a moment here, and some dipshit ruins it with a childish prank. Why do I even bother trying? That's it. I'm out of here. Matt, I'll be at the hotel. Take us out, Francesca. Thank you, Michael, for that good try at an interview with Santa Claus. That's it from all of us here at the Action News Desk. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Ho ho ho!